What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Total War Warhammer. My name is Splattercat, very happy to have you here today, and I just noticed our fightiness meter is getting pretty close to spawning a wog. If we can spawn a wog, that's basically the end for the Red Fangs, because then we can evade over here with just a ridiculous overwhelming force and just auto-resolve our way through their lands. Like, I'm not even joking with you right now, I got a wog last time, and I was able to go through the Dwarvish areas just auto-resolving the entire time, because the entire meter was yellow! It was just like, it was a thousand of their guys. Sure, they had like a thousand, fifteen hundred garrison inside their cities. But at the end of the day, my orcs had like forty five hundred orcs. It's just like, what do you do against a horde? And what they don't tell you is that the... Why do I have a... Oh, my hero's over here. Okay, cool. So I don't know if I want to add him to my retinue. He is a big boss, which means that he will upgrade. And so what you can do with him is you can give him a wolf and then a spider. And then you can make him, like, better at fighting and stuff like that. That's what I did with mine, as I made him have a really high melee attack and melee defense, and I just used him like that. The other option is you can spec him into the spy tree. And then what you can do is you can deploy him in various areas by using this button right here. And depending on where he's at, he'll give you different status effects. So, for example, he can block enemies. He can assassinate. He can embed with a hero. He can cleanse corruption. He can do all kinds of nice stuff here. And actually... Cleansing Corruption is not a terrible plan. It would probably help out. We need to keep heading south, though. As far as he goes... I would consider... Oh, I don't know. I'm just going to have him counter spy for right now. What you'll notice is he just kind of hangs out over here and does like a little boogie dance because why would you play the orcs if you didn't want to do little boogie dances? And basically contextually he'll do stuff based on like if an army tries to walk past him, he'll try to like auto block it. Like there's a bunch of random stuff that he'll do just by being deployed like that. And it's really, really streamlined. This is honestly, I'm always interested to watch how Total War... Total War used to be a pretty complicated game back in the day. Consider laying an ambush for the enemy, sire. Fall upon them when they least expect it. The winds of magic have shifted around yet again. And nowadays, they've streamlined a lot of the systems that used to just be little time sinks that were involved in the game. Nowadays, those don't quite exist anymore. Like, you can basically just get stuff done pretty efficiently. And you're able to contextualize a lot of the little activities that your little side guys will do. Next turn, or two turns from now, we'll be able to turn this into a greenskin camp, which will be helpful too. Because that will give us six more garrisons, which means that we're looking at around... Well, actually, I think we have five. I think it's adding one, maybe. I don't know if it adds an extra six units, or if it just takes those five and converts them into the six right here. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll see what happens when we go through here. Karak Eight Peaks has a... I'm sorry, Black Crag has a pretty good... It's level 2, and its garrison is pretty terrifyingly sizable, so... I would worry about it slightly. Iron Rock is going to have a rebellion soon, if I don't do something with it. Actually, I may turn off Extortion of Income, which will allow us to even out... Like, we're not going to be buying anything anytime soon anyways... And so that should help us with some of our random issues as far as rebellions. And yeah, because when that number gets to 100, they are going to spawn armies and things that will fight against us. And so we'll have infighting that we'll have to deal with. And frankly, I am a little claustrophobic. Oh, shitballs. We offer peace, not that we expect the scum to... Yeah, whatever. I, I don't see that ever happening in a Warhammer universe. I would have actually made the orcs incapable of diplomacy at all aside from extorting each other. So like you could say that I'll attack this place or I won't attack this place if you pay me off. But I, I wouldn't allow them to make peace treaties with anybody other than other orcs or something like that. I'll make peace with him right now because he's inside my lands with a giant army. But uh, hopefully is he trustworthy? Will he go back on that? Hmm. If I go to the uh, diplomacy menu, we haven't built a goblin workshop either. We gotta get started on that too. I gotta put a goblin workshop in somewhere so I can start working on my research. That's gonna be a major issue for us. Some people would probably recommend you do the goblin research first. 
Iron Rock's got space, though. Although Iron Rock can't make the bench until it hits level 2. It might be worth it to break the mustering fields because we've already built these things in another... I don't think they stack. And so, like, if I break that down, that gives me an extra slot to play with. Which, in turn... Yeah, which, in turn, would allow me to actually buff growth and make that a little bit better over here. And then it provides me with the opportunity to do another activity as well. I, I can build another building over here which won't be using up the same slots and I think it, it's regional so as long as we have this flag inside the death pass region we don't need any other rallying flags we should be good. We've taken most of Karag Drawn as the last place we need to take if we wanted the Badlands but that would require us to kick off with the Bloody Spears and the Bloody Spears are a bigger faction of the orcs and so we may not want to cross them just yet until we've got a bit more supply to play around with. These guys have how long until they resupply? Three turns? Shitty. Alright, well, we'll wait for it. What are you going to do? They've retreated back to their lands, and yet another army. I don't like the fact that their armies are just, like, marching around wherever the hell they want to go. That sucks to be one of those guys on the bottom, I tell you what. The enemy threaten your city here, my lord. The garrison stand ready to defend it, but consider sending extra troops. The teeth snatches have been obliterated. There is nothing left apart from the echoing laughter of the thirsting gods. So what faction is this right here? This is just dwarfs. Were we... God. Relations with foreign powers may be managed through diplomacy, my lord. Consider your situation carefully before accepting any agreement. Um... I thought I smelt Urk stench. I don't think they're going to want to bargain with me. We may lose Iron Rock for a minute or two here. He's still in march mode. So I should be able to reinforce over here pretty quickly. We've got a bigger army, but it's still going to be a nasty battle. But what would Total War be without one big nasty battle per episode, right? The margin of error on this one is pretty large. I mean, what do they have? Grudge throwers? And quarrelers. I mean, we do have the city walls, I think. We, we can try it. I mean, I don't see us doing very well. But I wasn't expecting to get invaded by the dwarves anytime soon. I was actually kind of worried about... Was a little bit more worried about the red fangs than I was the dwarves. And so I'm not really looking to get into a big fight right here right now. But it may have to... Oh, we're actually on open field. Oh, yeah, we're toast. I thought we were, like, fighting in a city. Like, Rome-style shit. Yeah, this is going to be ugly for us. This is not going to be a fun day. I probably should have just conceded this one first. It'll be... Alright, so we got a little group of fighters over here. Little group of archers over here. Eh, it'll work out for right now, but yeah, their army is... Yeah, I don't think we have a whole lot of a chance of walking out of this one anyways, amigo. The meter started, I mean, it's ugly. Technically, it's 730 versus 937, but a dwarf one is worth way more than an orc one. So, this could be a painful day for us. A very, very painful day. Ah, good. And here comes the artillery weapons. This is why I liked having artillery when I played as the other orc character. Because artillery can just do a number before the enemy can get near to you. And that number can be quite large. So we want to get inside of its fire range. Just basically stay in motion. Oof. 
Holding still is a bad plan for right now. Yep, just get in there, guys. Man, we are losing orcs like crazy. Although, you wouldn't have to be that crazy to lose orcs. Shit. Alright, fire at the quarrelers. Fire at the quarrelers. And then I have no idea what they're doing over there. Looks like they might be attempting to turn a flank or something. I don't know. You reroute right there. Yeah, I think they're trying to turn a flank. And so we should... I mean, I'm just looking to soften this up, basically. I just want to hurt them as much as possible. You boys over there. You boys right there. And basically, we're just stalling for time now. I mean, goblins are not going to hold against dwarvish infantry for very long. They're going to go through goblins pretty rapidly. How many quarrelers have we killed out of curiosity? Any? Oh, we killed one right there. We killed one. Yeah, I figured our warriors were probably going to flee pretty quickly at the front end of this battle here. Not much that I can do about that one. Oh, they've routed. Goody. That's my favorite. And now we're surrounded, so fire arrows at them, please. Although we are wavering at the moment. Oh, they've also got a lord on the field. That's the other part that I had forgotten about. We're actually doing pretty well against some of these groupings right here. Our lord's army is not doing terribly against these miners, but... It's still, it's just one unit. Yeah, we've already routed along that side. So unfortunately, that's all done and over with. They're firing arrows at my archers who are now routing. I didn't expect to win this fight anyways. I wasn't... And here they come from this direction to actually cause a route on this side. So unfortunately, that's going to be that. We should get the defeat splash pretty soon. At least we were able to inflict some losses though. I mean, that's all that I really wanted to do. It's not going to let us continue the fight. They lost 73, actually. Okay, so we didn't do so great. We softened them up a little bit, though. And it's just a garrison, so it gets replenished. It's not that big of a deal. Hopefully, he doesn't raise it. If he raises it, I don't think he will because most of these areas are like dwarvish ceremonial lands. As it turned out, they did raid the location, which was a little weird. So, I wasn't expecting that. The omens are ill. Something you have done has angered the gods, yet they are fickle. They may forgive you in time, or more immediate appeasement might be necessary. So we get a tribute, or we get angry gods. I'm going to have to go with the tribute, because right now I can't have any further lack of obedience. It's weird that... I mean, I guess if we're at war, we're at war. Here, run up in here. So he's right there. He's actually retreating. I had thought for sure. Oof. All right. Repair all the buildings. Get him going. Oh, good. We can actually make a green skin camp now. So that's a plus that'll help out a little bit. We've got tribute remaining for another turn or so. I was expecting things to go very, very differently. And they did not go that way. You also appear to have true laryngitis, man. You get some lozenges on that shit. Promise you, you'd be feeling... Oh, we can upgrade that one, too. Good. Let's make these cities a little bit more fortified. Now, that does come with a dual-edged sword. What that means is that if somebody else takes these, I think it keeps the upgrades. Which makes our invasion that much more nasty if they take it from us. Turn down extort income for right now, because we don't really need the cash that badly. Instead, what we need is obedience. And then let's wait and see what's going on here. Scabby I have been obliterated. Okay, there's nothing left apart from the echoing laughter of the gods. The Red Fang's wog. Oh, shit. The ground shakes, the mountains tremble, but this is no earthquake. Something far more deadly approaches. A wog. The warriors in Dringo Rackas ready their weapons for the Red Fangs will show the tribe no mercy. So Dringo Rackus is... So they're down there. They may come after us with the wog. That means we are pincered on both sides with factions that I really don't want to be fighting with because we only have the one main army. I could raise another army pretty easily. I mean, I would just have to get another lord here. So we got Blazgak Mudera, who's just a war boss. He's stupid, which means that 
shares the intellect of a river troll, so he's bad at mission type stuff, but he's okay. He's got Ogrob, Gitrencha. I'd probably just go with Blazcak because he's got the word Cack in his name, and that makes me laugh. Total army estimated to... Okay, so army upkeep by 2%. Yep, it's going to get expensive. It's going to get expensive real quick, although I can just extort income if I really, really need it. We should be good at most of our locations right now. Yeah, we're positive. So that makes it so that I can maybe raise more armies. But we need to work ourselves up to a wog too, otherwise we ain't gonna make it. We are at war with the dwarves, which means we could technically invade their territory and just get moving here. I will probably try to center up around here somewhere and just kind of see what happens so that I can adapt to the situation as need be. So we've got dwarves over there. Winds of magic have changed yet again. Mm. We're not doing too badly right now, but I would very much like to go after them for what they did to me. That would require me to have some kind of passive peace with the Red Fangs, though I should have taken it. We can try for it now. Let's see, Red Fangs. Where's my manners? Come, come and die. So let's go ahead and we'll add a peace treaty. Likelihood of success is low. We'll also add a payment. We'll add a payment of 1600 Good God. Yeah, that's not that great. Let's go with a payment of... Can I type in a number? I was going to say, I would rather type in a number here. I don't want to go with like their auto-resolve stuff. They're in a good... They're in a really, really good strategic position right now, so chances are... Yeah, there is only Wog. They know that they have a Wog going on right now. I could fight the Wog, maybe. It's going to be ugly, though. This is the problem with being neighbors to orcs and people like that, is that... Unfortunately, on occasion, you're going to have to go up against a Wog. Yeah, and you see how it had its own faction shield up there? You see that shit, how it said, blah, blah, blah's Wog? Yeah, exactly. Let's drop our stance for right now. Velaya Sorrow should be done in just a minute. Oh, Velaya Sorrow is actually done. Okay, so we can build a new building. Velaya Sorrow, I think we said we were going to turn into a cash farmer, but we actually need... Oh, yeah, how did the garrison move around? Yeah, it replaces it with the previous garrison, so it's not that good. What we could do is that'll get our growth higher. It's only 100 extra gold per turn. I wouldn't hate the prospect of some more wolf riders or something. I'm going to do a goblin watchtower. Which... Would add... Quite a few garrisons to this area. And then we could just re... We could unbuild it later on. So that's probably what I'll do. I just want the garrison to be a little bit larger. So that I feel... Less terrified by what's going on on my southern border right now. And then meanwhile... We should probably... I don't know. Let's head to the dwarf lands for a little bit. We'll see what we can accomplish out here. I don't know if there's anything too interesting out this way, but we'll check it out. Storm clouds gather in the north. There are rumors that the barbarous tribes residing in the shadow of chaos have ceased striving against each other for the attention of the dark gods and are instead banding together, suckling at the teat of chaos. The hordes grow in strength. It seems only a matter of time before the dam breaks and the tide of ruin bursts forth to engulf the old world, corrupting or destroying all within its path. Marshal your strength, nurture the sinews of war, build your walls high, gather warriors to your banner, and temper them in the crucible of battle, so that when the time comes you may yet weather the storm. Looks like they got a pretty big army inside of there. Instead, I may push for Doc Karaz. 
Because it looks like Doc Karaz might be a slightly squishier target. Yeah, I was worried about that. Exactly. Now look at the size of these armies. Like, wogs are pretty hardcore. He may actually end us. Dealing with a wog is not something we're in a position to do right now. Uh, definitely ain't gonna win that one, so... And that's only going to make the wog worse. Lyasaro has been sacked, and so they stole money from me. Okay, and then they're raiding the area. We can't fight that wog on our own, though. We can't fight that wog. So what we need to do is we need to get our fightiness up. If we can. If I can get my fightiness up, it's going to take a couple turns, though. I can spawn my own wog, and that would be, like, the only way we're going to be able to go after them. Have you leveled up at all, pal? Oh, yeah, it's good. I'm going to give him Spy. I'm going to make him into one of my, one of my attacky heroes. And so he's going to be kind of like a, an agent, basically, sneaking around doing secret agent shit. We will deal with this wog suitably very, very shortly. But for now, you have damage building. Oh, yeah, okay, so let me. Velaya's sorrow is more than likely, and you can't extort income from, like, income from there. Their income is not turned on, okay. So that's fine. Got an extra building to be built right there. Oh, really? You can go to level three, huh? Cool. I don't know if now is the time for that, but it'd be nice. Here, give me a place where I can recruit cavalry. And then that'll be it. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the next episode of Warhammer. Total War. I will see you all in future episodes. Things are kind of ugly right now. They aren't looking good for us. Chances are it's going to go badly, but we will sort it. That wog, unfortunately, is aimed right at us. They aren't going after anybody else. I will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Wolf and then a spider, and then you can make him like better at fighting and stuff like that. That's what I did with mine, as I made him have a really high melee attack and melee defense, and I just used him like that. The other option is you can spec him into the spy tree, and then what you can do is you can deploy him in various areas by using this button right here. Depending on where he's at, he'll give you different status effects. So, for example, he can block enemies. He can assassinate. He can embed with a hero. He can cleanse corruption. He can do all kinds of nice stuff here. And actually, cleansing corruption is not a terrible plan. It would probably help out. We need to keep heading south, though. As far as he goes... I would consider Oh, I don't know. What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Total War Warhammer. My name is Splattercat. Very happy to have you here today and I just noticed our fightiness meter is getting pretty close to spawning a wog. If we can spawn a wog, that's basically the end for the Red Fangs because then we can evade over here with just a ridiculous overwhelming force and just auto-resolve our way through their lands. Like, I'm not even joking with you right now. I got a wog last time, and I was able to go through the Dwarvish areas just auto-resolving the entire time because the entire meter was yellow. It was just like, it was a thousand of their guys. Sure, they had like a thousand, fifteen hundred garrison inside their cities, but at the end of the day... My orcs had like 4,500 orcs. It's just like, what do you do against a horde? And what they don't tell you is that the... Why do I have a... Oh, my hero's over here. Okay, cool. So I don't know if I want to add him to my retinue. He is a big boss, which means that he will upgrade. And so what you can do with him is you can give him a... Wolf. Help us with some of our random issues as far as rebellions. And yeah, because when that number gets to 100... They are going to spawn armies and things that will fight against us, and so we'll have infighting that we'll have to deal with. And frankly, I am a little claustrophobic. Oh, shit balls. We 
We offer peace, not that we expect the scum to... Yeah, whatever. I, I don't see that ever happening in a Warhammer universe. I would have actually made the orcs incapable of diplomacy at all aside from extorting each other. So, like, you could say that I'll attack this place or I won't attack this place if you pay me off. But I, I wouldn't allow them to make peace treaties with anybody other than other orcs or something like that. I'll make peace with him right now because he's inside my lands with a giant army. But, uh... Hopefully, is he trust next turn or two turns from now, we'll be able to turn this into a greenskin camp, which will be helpful too. Because that will give us six more garrisons, which means that we're looking at around... Well, actually, I think we have five. I think it's adding one, maybe. I don't know if it adds an extra six units or if it just takes those five and converts them into the six right here. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll see what happens when we go through here. Karak Eight Peaks has a... I'm sorry, Black Crack has a pretty good... It's level two, and its garrison is pretty terrifyingly sizable, so... I would worry about it slightly. Iron Rock is going to have a rebellion soon, if I don't do something with it. Actually, I may turn off Extortion of Income, which will allow us to even out. Like, we're not going to be buying anything anytime soon anyways, and so that should... I'm just gonna have him counter spy for right now. What you'll notice is he just kind of hangs out over here and does like a little boogie dance because why would you play the orcs if you didn't want to do little boogie dances? And basically, contextually, he'll do stuff based on like if an army tries to walk past him, he'll try to like auto block it. Like there's a bunch of random stuff that he'll do just by being deployed like that, and it's really really streamlined. This is honestly, I'm always interested to watch how Total War. Total War used to be a pretty complicated game back in the day. Consider laying an ambush for the enemy, sire. Fall upon them when they least expect it. The winds of magic have shifted around yet again. And nowadays, they've streamlined a lot of the systems that used to just be little time sinks that were involved in the game. Nowadays, those don't quite exist anymore. Like, you can basically just get stuff done pretty efficiently. And you're able to contextualize a lot of the little activities that your little side guys will do.